The forum was hosted by Bergen Grassroots, a nonpartisan, nonprofit corporation focused on keeping county residents informed about the activities of Bergen's governmental entities. Its website and this forum series are at www.bergengrassroots.org. Thank you. I think that, uh, as you know, John Hogan is the incumbent. Um, he's been in, 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 had that job for six years, if I understand. Is that right? Five. Uh, uh, I'm almost can. six. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll have six eventually, one way or another. And then, um, and then Mr. Olmo is his challenger. And, uh, and they had a very interesting discussion last time. And I'm sure they will again. And the questions we're asking them are really quite like the ones we asked the surgeons. So let me begin. And this time, we'll start with the, uh, with the uh, challenger. What obligation or duty of the, uh, of the clerk you believe will be the most difficult for whoever is in the office holder to meet or achieve in the next three years? What would you need to change or what resources needed or what legislative change would be most important to improve the likelihood of success on that problem? Do you believe that you will be able to implement that change? Mr. Olmo. Thank you. Thank you for the Bergen Grassroots for uh, holding us and thank all of you for coming out in the rain. Um, in today's world, there are many people. And I think you need to get that microphone closer to your mouth. Is this better? <laughs> and, and, and keep and, on telling us about that if you need it, folks. In today's world, there are many people, including sophisticated individuals, who wish to do us harm, and I believe the clerk's office can serve as one of the offices that can greatly assist in helping to protect our county. There are two major areas of concern. The first is security of our election process, and the second is the problem of identity theft, as the surrogate mentioned. In the past months, there have been numerous states that have asked the Department of Homeland Security for assistance in securing their system. The county's computer system is outdated and leaves us vulnerable. I believe my extensive background in local government, my experience in both of line duty and investigative investigations uniquely allows me to confront those challenges now facing the clerk's office. I can honestly tell you identity theft and security of our electoral process is vital, not just to our county, but to our great country as well. There are simple steps that can be taken to help the staff at the clerk's office in helping them in detect fraud at no cost to the county, at no cost to the county. We have an excellent group of sheriff's officers who are highly trained and have extensive training in fraud detection. Um, with the shared services, we ask municipalities to do a shared services as the county, we should also do a shared service and incorporate all of our offices to work together to train each other in detecting fraud and identity theft. That issue would require, my, my would be require voters to show identification when voting, as many states do now. Um, this will take us appealing to the legislator to enact this law and it is one that will be one of my goals when elected as clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Clerk, uh, clerk Hogan. It's hard, to, it's hard to say. <laughs> um, well, it's not, I'm just a little tired. What is most challenging that I'll be facing? I've already faced a lot of challenges. Almost five years ago, when I assumed office, I assumed office 10 days after the election, once, once it was certified. And what I found in that office, you would never believe, because that office always flew under the radar. I've shined the spotlight on that office since I've been there for the past five years. We had an office that was 12 years into the new century that was still functioning like it was in the old century, the prior century. We had mimeographed papers throughout the office giving people instructions on how to get passports. We had the county clerk for years was overpaying for election printing. I said, I'm going to save $200,000 a year in election printing costs. And then I went to work right away to do that. I'm pleased to tell you, which you probably already know, we've now saved a cumulative amount of $1 million in election printing costs, which then allowed me to free up some money to modernize the office. You can complete some of the functions that you used to have to come into our office to do from the luxury of your home. 
because we know about the working families of our county, how precious their times are. Someone who wanted to open up a business before used to have to come into the office and go through a book to look to see if that business name was used. We scan those books. We have election results online, current and historic election results online. And you get the election results when I get them. We did that right away. We did it in-house. We didn't go outside to hire outside services. And the final thing is fraud and security. It seems to be the flavor of the month for our opponents because that's all they seem to be talking about. That, but that's what happens when you really don't have much of a campaign or not many issues. And I'll speak on that a little more in a second. And you're going to get a chance right to go ahead and, um, and sequence right into that. You get the second question to lead off with Dr. Hogan. What function, aspect, or responsibility, including the budget development? And you've talked on that somewhat already. Of the Office of Clerk, do you believe your opponent in this election will be least effective in implementing during the next three years? If he were elected or we elected clerk, why do you believe your skill and experience or other qualifications would enable you to implement that function or aspect more effectively than your opponent? Okay, let me just talk about what we did first. We were able to, to roll back spending in the office to levels of 15 years ago, which I have a chart which anyone can freely see. We also rolled back the amount of employees to 50, 15 years ago. I wish it was 50 years ago. 15 years ago. We not only rolled it back when I assumed office, we held it at that. So we're functioning that office with budget and employees with how that office functioned 15 years ago. You're asking me, um, how would my opponent be least effective? Well, Hector hasn't done the job, and with some of the things that I've heard in these debates, I don't think he understands the job or he's misinformed about the functions of the office of the Burden County Clerk. I owned my own business before I did this. I had a little insurance agency. I paid the bills. I didn't get a check every two weeks, the same check every two weeks. I got a check once a month. It was based upon my production, what I did, how I managed my office, how I managed my staff. To have those business skills really adds to, to, to what you have to do. Now, Hector's saying that you have to be a cop to be the county clerk. Five years ago, I heard from my opponent who had a problem with showing up for work they had to be a lawyer to be the county clerk. I'm going to ask what's next? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Thank you. Mr. Romo, you uh, have a chance to respond to the same, the same question. What function, sure. aspect, of responsibility, including the budget development? Do you believe your opponent in this election will be least effective well, the, in implementing during the next three years? And why would you do a better job? The, one of the one of the issues or aspects and responsibility, which uh, the sort of current surrogate mentioned, was the two percent cap. Um, as he stated, the two percent cap has been implemented to all the constitutional officers. In my experience as a three-term councilman, negotiating contracts on the side of the administration, and my experience in labor negotiations as a police officer, as Mr. Hogan stated, for 27 years and 17 years as the president of the PBA and negotiating labor contracts on the other side gives me a perspective from both sides and is beneficial when delivering a budget within the parameters which will be, te will be asked. Um, why did the legislator put this 2% cap? It was for counties like Bergen that have increased the budget over 4% for the last two years. So while the councilmen in our communities and all councilmen in the communities, we have to work under a 2% cap, the county has free reign. So this is, this, what this is going to do is going to take better, better management of discretionary funds. Um, the election of this office is not about the clerk. Um, it is about the office of the clerk. Um, and Mr. Hogan stated about that you had to be a police officer. The last debate when I brought up the issue of security, um, Mr. Hogan stated that he spoke to one of his friends, another clerk down in South Jersey, who happened to be a police officer, who he asked for advice on dealing with the security issues at the clerk's office. So my experience and my background gives me, I believe, a unique understanding in being the clerk and be doing what's best for the residents of Earth County. Can I just follow up? And why do you think you could do that better than Mr. Hogan? 
as I stated, just my experience over nine, nine years as a councilman and my experience as a law enforcement officer, I believe gives me and dealing on both sides. The 2% cap, we take it lightly. I've seen the effects that it can have on a municipality and on the employees in the office. Um, it, it, is a, it, is a, it makes a working environment on both sides a very difficult thing to manage. Um, myself, or the clerks, the sheriff, and the surrogate will understand that firsthand. Okay. And we're going to stay with you like we had with the, the same sequence we did in reverse with the surrogate and ask you what issue facing the county poses the most significant challenge to the safety, liberty, and quality of life of Bergen County residents, including those who are most vulnerable? And does the clerk or clerk's office you hold or serve in your, or seek in your case, have anything to do with the effective resolution of that challenge? If so, what can you do in respect of that if you elected, Mr. Yeah. Alderman? And I, I believe I answered, we both answered the question in, in our first two. Um, but what I would like to do is, to, for the vulnerable and the people, a, a challenge in Bergen County is we are not a county that is very easily, easily to get around. Um, if you don't have a car, it's very difficult for you to get around this county. Um, one of the ideas of the clerk that I agree with is the clerk's office going on the road to the municipalities. I would like to make this a more permanent basis and not just during an election year to bring it in, into towns where you're trying to get, garner some votes. I'd like to make it somewhere, and again, using the shared services between the clerk's office, the surrogate, and the, the county to bring services to people closer to them that may not be able to get to the county office and having it bring, brought closer to their home. Um, at the end of this election, um, whether you're an R, a D, an I, an L, or a G, um, we're all Bergen County residents. Um, I will work for the Bergen County residents. I am not beholden to any PAC, any corporation, any printing company that has donated money, large amounts of money to a campaign. I'm responsible to you, all of you, the people of the county, that will elect me to the office of the clerk. Thank you. Thank you. Clerk Hogan. Before I answer the question, I just want to go back to an observation of just a couple of minutes ago. I think Hector acknowledged that he's willing to increase spending in the office by 2%. For five years, I haven't increased spending not 1%, not one dime. We're functioning the office on how it was 15 years ago. Um, in his own town, in Creskill, Hector served as a councilman for the five years on the council, taxes have increased 11%. So I think that shows the difference in management style. I can't answer the question as far as the county's concerned, because I don't run the county government, but I can answer it from my office. The biggest challenge is to always protect the integrity of the office of the Bergen County Clerk, because someone's always trying to take a shot at the office and we're always there to defend ourselves and prove them wrong. As you hear tonight, we're for it. Quality of life, we have temporary satellite offices, we have mobile apps, we have a user-friendly website. Let's just go back to fraud for a second. It's almost impossible to commit fraud in the office of the Bergen County Clerk. We accept passport applications. If you knew the job, you would know that we don't process those applications. Those are sent out to the State Department. I'm sure in some instances, Homeland Security gets involved. We provide the copies of licenses, birth certificates, and other things that are required. So we're not a law enforcement agency, nor should we be taking that on. Land records are, pu are public records that are available to the pu public. And elections, there are safeguards. Hector said again that the computers back, date back to the 1980s. There's been upgraded security with a 2016 firewall purchased earlier this year, Cisco ASA 5500 and software that the county executive and the freeholders purchased. Our election systems are not web-based, so you can't hack our election systems. So you can't make accusations just to try to get elected to office. All right, Cliff, are there questions? 
Yes, we have a couple of questions from the audience. First, why is Bergen County the only county in New Jersey to print election ballots in three languages? And how are you going to manage the budget to print ele election ballots? I suppose that that's a question, first of all, that we asked of the incumbent, and then we'll get the response. Okay, when I, when I assumed office, the Voting Rights Act says that every time there's a census, if there's 5% or more of the population who can vote, who are eligible to vote, but they're non-English speaking, we then have to offer the ballot in that language. Um, and we did so. We delivered that, including school board elections that were moved to, uh, to November. Um, I'm sure that'll be looked at again at, after the next census. The good news is, coming down the horizon, the superintendent of elections is speaking about purchasing new, a portion of the actual voting booths, the actual screen, and it's gonna be a touched screen that you can then hit the corner of the screen and the ballot will change to English, Spanish, or Korean, or any other language. So we see that cost hopefully being reduced um, through time. But the fact of the matter is we offered the ballot in three languages. Us in Queen, Queens County, New York, are the only ones in the East Coast that do it. And we cut $200,000 in election printing costs at the same time. Mr. Obama, you have a response to that? It is, legislatively, it is, it's mandated by the, by the legislator now. County at the census, he's correct. Um, and and he says about cutting the cost of printing cost. The printing cost was reduced two hundred thousand dollars a year for five years for a million dollars, without putting it out to bid. If you put it out to bid, just think of the cost that you could save by putting it out to bid and have competitive people. They say that there's very few people that can do those. It is a, it is a specialized um, printer to to do the ballots, but I'm sure there's other printers that could do that at a savings to the county. So another question? Yes, what? another question. How are you going to reflect <coughs> the county clerk's office as to Bergen County ethnic groups? Um, I'll let the incumbent again start with that one. Okay, that was one of my main goals when I assumed the office, is that I got into the office and the employees didn't reflect the people we serve. As time progressed, people retired, people moved on. I hired people who would best reflect the diversity of our county. I can say that at this point, five years later, we've hired 30 people who now can interpret 11 different languages. We're, pr we're probably the most diverse county in the state. We have to step up to that challenge and we have to hire accordingly, and that's what we've done. Challenge Romo. When I'm elected, you would immediately change the diversity of the clerk's office because I'm Hispanic. I speak Spanish, I write Spanish, and I read Spanish. So I understand the difficulties that it can be. How did I learn Spanish? As a kid going to Puerto Rico, if I wanted to eat or do anything, they only spoke Spanish, so I'd have to learn, okay? Um, so I understand the value of letting the people understand what their government is doing for them and to have the most diverse group of people working that could translate in, in many different languages because it is disheartening when you go somewhere and someone can't help you. You feel helpless. So that I totally agree with making it as, as diverse as possible. Let me ask you a question. The uh, federal folks have said this e even this evening that they are concerned about the potential for violence in and around the uh, election process on November 8th. Um, I'm gonna ask the question a little bit differently. I don't suspect that everybody in this county understands that there is a clerk that has election responsibilities, there's a superintendent of elections, and there's a board of elections. And how is it, and there's also, in terms of protection of public safety, we're gonna hear about that with, with the sheriff, are the issues being raised by the federal folks about potential violence, something that, that you have been thinking about in relationship to the office that you would seek, Mr. Olmo, and then Mr. Hogan can give a response to that. I, I, I believe the people of Bergen County are, are honorable and, and law-abiding citizens. I don't believe that we're going to see in the county uh, lawlessness and, and uh, violence during the election. Um, 
as a police officer, numerous locations that we have elections are, are in schools, um, and there's a safety concern. So you may see police officers at the ballots, at the polls, and it's not because we're afraid of violence or we're, we're protecting the students that are in the school because there's a lot of, to get into a school nowadays, it's very difficult. Um, so I don't see that as an issue here in Bergen County. I, I believe we're, we're above, above that, and, and I don't see it as a big issue. Incumbent Hogan. Okay, I've been removed from the election process since March because I am a candidate. My deputy, who happens to be the first Latina deputy clerk ever in Bergen County, um, she's heading up the, the elections. I can speak in general terms because just like any citizen, I have the right to know how the election's being run. Homeland Security has met with the different election agencies. They're very much involved. Sheriff, I hope you don't shoot me when I say this, but the night before election, the sheriff's gonna come into our building where all the results are received in the county clerk's office with bomb sniffing dogs. The day of the election, he's gonna be doing the same thing. We have an alternate site that is set up just in case our site goes down. There are a lot of precautions. I don't think I should go any further than that, but I think everyone could go home tonight and be rest assured that everything that can possibly be done to make sure that we deliver a fair, open, honest election is being done. The fix is not in. The election's not decided now. Don't believe any of that crazy stuff from crazy people, okay? People are working real hard to deliver this election. <laughs> hey, Chuck. Uh, Chuck, we have another question from okay. the audience. This is for Mr. Olmo. Mr. Olmo, somebody in the audience is taking issue with your statement that if elected you would require voter ID at polling places. They claim that it's actually a violation of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 to do that. Would you like to clarify your answer? I just said that there, there are many states that require it now. So why can't we, with, in the day and age that we are in now, with the concerns, I can, I can go online in, in less than two days, I could have a New Jersey driver's license in anybody else's name. And you, would know, you wouldn't know any better. As, as a police officer, I see fraudulent documents on the road every single day that I work for 27 years. You'd be rest assured that you would see somebody who wasn't there. The, the sheriff's jails are filled with people that tried to do that. Okay, so why, if you can ask for a driver's license to get into a bar, to get into somewhere else, why can't you ask for a driver's license and ID so that we know who is voting? That's, that's, my, that's my response. Claire Cogan, do you have a response to that? Yeah, first of all, if you know that fraud's being committed, or the potential for fraud to be commit, committed, it's incumbent upon elected officials and law enforcement to notify the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office, which I've done from my office when things didn't seem legit. That, that's important to do. I was once a Bergen County Election Commissioner. A commissioner from the other side of the aisle accompanied me because a candidate and his wife, who were running way back when in Cliffside Park, had decided to have everyone proof there were challengers in that election. The line went out the door. There were people that were 80, 85, 90 years old who didn't have driver's licenses, who didn't walk around with their ID, who had to be escorted home again and to come back with the proper proof. At the end of the day, some people didn't vote. Uh, we went in there right away with a police officer, with the town attorney, with an attorney from the county, and, and we got that ended. There's a reason why the Voting Rights Act was passed. You don't have to pay a poll tax anymore. I don't want to go back to how it was in the 1950s and early 60s. Would one of you just take 40 seconds and describe, you, when you said you were election commissioner, that means you were a member of the Board of Elections yes. in the county. Yes. That's different than the superintendent of elections. Yes. That's different than the clerk. Well, one of you, who, who would like to explain how those three pieces work? The, the election process is divided into three separate entities so that, as Mr. Hogan said, there isn't a fix. If the superintendent of elections is of one party, the board of elections has to be of another party. And the, clerk, the clerk's office, he's in charge of absentee ballots uh, and vote by mail, which then gets sent to the board of elections. 
and, and it handles that. So each individual one handles one particular part of the election. I, I, I don't think that Mr. Hogan agrees with everything you just if, said. If I may, I, I think what Hector was trying to say was that if the superintendent of elections is from the Republican Party, her deputy has to be a Democrat. The superintendent of elections is responsible for any voter fraud at all for investigating. She's the only one that has investigative powers. If you get in as clerk, you can't investigate elections, just so you know. Um, and um, she's responsible for the voting machines, for securing the voting machines. There's a board of elections that's appointed by the governor. Four members, one, two from each party, all right? Their responsibilities are all the paper ballots. The vote by mail ballots are received by the Board of Elections. They're compiled, they're checked for accurate signatures. And then if there's anything questionable, those four commissioners sit down and they decide whether to count them or not. And they're put aside in case there's a recount. Um, that, that's the key role. They're also responsible for all those board workers that work on election day. They're responsible for that. My office is responsible for putting the ballot together, for mailing out the vote by mail ballots, processing those requests, and for receiving and certifying the election. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, I should, I should uh, you want to say something? Um, Chuck, yeah. could I ask a question? Yeah. And from my own personal point of view, uh, I know when I go to vote, I walk into the local school, I go up to the desk in the part of town that I'm from, and they don't ask me for an ID because I have to sign a, to get my slip to get into the ballot. I have to sign where it shows my signature in the registered voters roll of my town and either my signature matches or it doesn't, I guess is one way of looking from the security point of view. So I'm not sure what we're talking about here when you talk about voter ID and showing ID when you come to vote. Uh, can you can you actually vote if you're not registered to vote? And what is the and and how do you get your slip to get in if you don't have to sign for it? And so, uh, what is the function of the ID? Your signature is your signature. Mr. Hogan, you want that first? Or? I think he asked Mr. Almo to see. Oh, oh, he did. I'm he sorry. wants the proof. No, I, 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 I would just like. I, both of you to answer if you can if you can enlighten me because I only know one process. I, I for me, to, I I've never to. been asked for an ID, and I don't see how it's a, how the whole process is able to be gained by having an ID but or not he, having. They want a voter ID, so I don't want to give them the answer. So go <laughs> <laughs> you you do that is how you, you when you go into if you're registered voter you go in you sign and as Mr. Hogan said there are challenges for me the party can be there if they don't know you. If you're, if you're, and most of the poll workers are not generally from the municipality that you're that you're voting in, okay. um, so they get people from other municipalities that are kind of going into other municipalities. So they don't know they don't know the voters um, in general. Um, so my, you can you can fake a signature, okay? If if I registered, and when I registered to vote by mail, I signed it. Well, when I go back in. I'm still going to be able to sign that signature because I originally signed it. Right. But the picture may not match who the person is. You understand what I'm saying? So if you have if you have a, a different picture on your driver's license for that person, and the people in town know who they are, they're going to know that's not who that is. So that's what the ID is going to. It just and and it's not something that's it's done in more than in more than three quarters of the state of of, of the United States require some form of ID to vote. There are 18 states that do not. So it's not something out of the ordinary. Mr. Hogan? Yes, um, when you get registered to vote, you have to provide one of two things on the application. You have to provide the last four of your social security number or your driver's license. It doesn't end at that. They don't automatically put you on the rolls. The superintendent of elections has a whole process to verify that you're alive, you're breathing, you're not somebody who moved over from Hudson County, that, that, that you're a legitimate, that, that, I wish you could push more, um, but that you're a legitimate voter. If there are any allegations at all, she has an inspectors, investigators, she has people on the day of election who investigates things. There's so much stuff that goes on, because that's a full-time position with a full-time staff. So that's what they do all year long. It's not like they open up just on election day. They investigate 
any potential for voter fraud. And my conversations with the deputy and also with the superintendent has been, there has been no voter fraud in Bergen County. All right, someone is saying it, it's because they're following their fearless leader who's saying that the election's fixed before it even happens. <laughs> Last uh, two minutes, each of you have two minutes to uh, either pick up anything that you think is sort of left hanging in this conversation and then tell us why it is that you're the person to put in the position of clerk. So it's the next week. This is, this is the close. Two minutes, why don't we start with the incumbent and then go to the challenge. Thank you. Um, as I said, I had many challenges when I assumed office, but before I get to those, usually accompanying me at these things are my wife, Ida, just in case you see it, it's Ida, I-D-A, I mentioned her name. Um, my son, John, who's 23 years old. I have a son, Ryan, who's 10 years old. And I have a daughter, Ava, who's seven years old. When we go out to eat, people say it's so nice to see you with the grandchildren, but they're really, <laughs> they're really my biological children. So I know what it's like for working families in Bergen County. They couldn't come tonight because they had too much homework. And they were exhausted from doing homework. And my wife was trying to cook. I didn't eat dinner tonight. Um, I'm pleased that the nine-point plan that I set out I probably had that all done the first three years. And so then we added to it with e-recording. You can now, over the internet, record your deeds and mortgages. Instead of doing it through mail, it's saving time, it's saving money, it's allowing me to use my staff in other areas. It's a real great thing. There's been thousands and thousands of people who have been utilizing this, and, and we're doing real well with it. I mentioned some of the other things already before, because I only have two minutes, and I'm answer to put that sign up. Um, I told you about the 15-year blows. I want to talk to you about what we're going to do when we're reelected. Okay? I said that we were going to do credit cards for uh, passport applications. Well, we got that done already, so that promise is completed. Difficult dealing with the federal government. It took almost five years, but now you can come and get a passport and use your credit card. We have shared service agreements we're starting to put together. I think we're working with the surrogate now because we're certified to scan documents and preserve them. Why should they go out to outside agencies when I could use our current manpower and staff to do it? We've already done it with the tax board. And we're going to do that probably for municipalities too. I want to extend our hours. We've extended them already. We're open a Saturday. That didn't happen for 20 years, folks. But yet people thought the person that was there 23 years, who was hiding in the shadows, was doing a great job. Uh, we extended the hours, and we're now going to extend them further once we get done with our union negotiations, because we're going to stagger hours. So I'm hoping to be open up until about, I see some staff members here, I hope they don't start throwing things at me, <laughs> by, by 7 o'clock at night. And the ball is going to be renamed the Land Records Management Division. We have historical documents up for display in that area. We're probably going to hire part-time a retired history teacher who's really interested in old documents. And we'll have a historical research center down there where people can check their backgrounds. They can look at the old land records to see when their relatives came to Bergen County. So we have a lot of good things planned. I'm looking to serve another five years. Mr. Olmo, thank you. Same thing, two and two minutes. Thank you. Oh, Anything thanks. that's left, and then we're why we should want you. Thank you. As you can see, I'm not new to serving the people of Bergen County. Um, I've always tried to treat them with respect, dignity, and compassion. And can you I get that microphone a little closer to you. I will always do my best to serve them. I have been in public service since I was 18 years old. I graduated high school. I went into the United States Navy. Came out, and became a police officer, and a volunteer fireman in in my town, hometown of Tanapla, where I grew up. Um, we had discussed many issues this evening. Um, my opponent and I have some different views on how they're best handled. John Hogan is not a bad guy. John Hogan, the clerk, I think I can do a better job than. Now, Mr. Hogan brought up about the taxes in Cresco going up, and that he is correct. Now, why did they go up? It's an issue, and it wasn't an easy, an easy decision to make. There was an issue, and it's an issue throughout all the 70 municipalities in Bergen County. And it's an issue of volunteerism. We in Cresco had a big problem with volunteers. 
we had two calls at the Temple, at the Cresco High School that went unanswered for over 30 minutes, a fire call. At that point, we, as the council, were proactive and not reactive, as many municipalities in the, in the county are, they keep their head in the sand and they hope that nothing bad happens. When, when the security and, and the well-being of the residents of our town was possibly in jeopardy, we as the council made a tough decision and are one of four municipalities, and we're only 8,000 residents, that have a full-time fire department and ambulance corps in the borough of Cresco. And I'm very proud of that um, because we decided, and that's one of my, I'm not scared of making the tough choices. Um, so with that, if you elect me, I will always serve the residents of Bergen County and do what's best for them. And as I said before, this election is about the office of the clerk, not the clerk. Thank you. Uh, round of a hand.